Respiration. Respiration is the process of gas exchange that takes place within the lungs between the body and the atmosphere. The mechanics of breathing are central to respiration. Movement of the thoracic cavity causes expansion of the lungs during inspiration and deflation of the lungs during expiration. The physics of respiration are supported by Boyle's Law, which states that changes in pressure are inversely proportional to changes in volume within the thoracic cavity. Thus, when volume is decreased, pressure is increased. Let's focus on the movement of intercostal muscles during respiration. During inspiration, intercostal muscles contract, causing the ribs to elevate. This causes the anterior-posterior dimensions of the chest to increase. Simultaneously, the diaphragm contracts, increasing the vertical dimensions of the chest. Together, these events result in expansion of lung volume, and thus, a corresponding decrease in intrathoracic pressure. This decrease in intrathoracic pressure allows air from the atmosphere to enter the lungs until equilibrium is reached. During expiration, intercostal muscles and the diaphragm relax leading to recoil in the thoracic cavity. This results in both a decrease in lung volume and a corresponding increase in pressure, which leads to air within the lungs being expelled. With this in mind, let's take a closer look at the mechanics of respiration and zoom in on the alveoli. Alveoli of the lungs are surrounded by capillaries and contain millions of cells where gas exchange takes place. Pay attention to the changes to the alveoli. During inspiration, alveoli inflate, and in expiration, they deflate. As we zoom in on the alveoli, we can see these changes more closely. When air from the outside, or atmospheric air, enters the alveoli during inspiration, oxygen moves from the alveoli to the capillaries by the process of diffusion. At the same time, carbon dioxide diffuses from the capillaries to the alveoli and is exhaled during expiration. Before inspiration, alveolar pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure, which is zero. At this point, there is no movement of air in or out of the lungs. During inspiration, the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles contract, increasing thoracic volume. As the lungs expand, alveolar volume increases, and alveolar pressure decreases. At this point, alveolar pressure, which is negative 1, is less than atmospheric pressure. This difference in pressure causes air to flow into the lungs. At the end of inspiration, inflow of air returns alveolar pressure toward zero. When it reaches zero, air flow stops. Then, during expiration, the opposite takes place. The diaphragm and intercostal muscles relax, causing the lungs to deflate. This decrease in volume within the thoracic cavity results in an increase in pressure. At this point, alveolar pressure, which is now 1, is more than atmospheric pressure, and thus, air proceeds to flow out of the lungs. The outflow of air returns alveolar pressure towards zero, at which point the air flow stops. In summary, it is a difference in pressure between the lungs and the atmosphere that drives the flow of air. Now that we've discussed the normal mechanics of respiration, let's turn our attention to restrictive diseases. In restrictive pulmonary diseases, such as fibrosis, lung expansion is limited. The normal maximum expansion of the lungs is represented here by dotted green lines. It is evident that, in this disease, the lungs are not able to reach their normal capacity. Without proper expansion, the lungs cannot fully increase in volume. As a result, without a sufficient decrease in pressure, the normal amount of air cannot enter the lungs. Therefore, patients with restrictive pulmonary disease have problems with inspiration. Obstructive disease can also affect normal lung function. Airway resistance is represented here by dotted blue lines in the lower right. 
in obstructive pulmonary diseases such as emphysema or chronic bronchitis, airway resistance is increased. This means that the lungs cannot fully deflate. Without proper deflation, the lungs cannot fully experience a corresponding increase in pressure to cause air to flow out of the lungs. As a result, patients with obstructive pulmonary disease have difficulties with expiration.